by introducing you and the book. Then I'll say hi and we'll start with the questions. You can decide if you want to answer. No problem for me. Yes, okay. Okay. If you're ready, I'll start. Yes, we're ready. Okay, great. Maria Lu and Maria Mila are twin sisters became part of the Filipino population in 1954. Maria Mila, the younger twin, is the author of In the Footsteps of La Madre, Santa Teresa de Avila. After living for a few years in Canada, she returned to the Philippines because no place is like home and decided to carry out God's will as an evangelist. In her book, written on the occasion of the 500th year of Christianity in the Philippines, she carries out their mission, a book designed for the Catholic reader to journey with two secular Carmelites in their quest to do God's will and holiness of life, and hopefully be moved by such experiences towards God. Today, we have the pleasure of interviewing the authors of this book. Hi, Maria. Hello. How are you? We are fine, thank you. Okay, so I'm happy to welcome you to Buenos Aires. We welcome you too in our television interview. Now, welcome to Ortega Twins Haven, Ibaristo Rosa Ortega Ancestral Home, here at San Fernando City, La Union, Philippines. The civil government of La Union was founded on January 16, 1896, and we twins were born on January 16, 1954. No wonder we call ourselves with the moniker or Tega Twins of La Union. And we are proud to say that our late grandfather, Don Joaquin J. Ortega, was the first civil governor of La Union in 1901. Great, that's great. Thank you for this introduction. So let's go to the book. Let's go to the book. Why did you decide to write your book and what were you inspired by? Our Holy Mother, St. Teresa of Avila, traveled around Spain and wrote her spiritual biography. For our part, we followed her example and went to the 17 countries and seven continents in the world and wrote our experiences. Sydney's Philippine president Bernard Carnaveral suggested that we use footsteps as our title. So for this book, Europe book publication, we titled In the Footsteps of La Madre, Santa Teresa de Avila. We read the adventure novel and watched the movie around the world in 80 days. For us twins, our travel took 84 days. Now, why 84? There are 12 apostles and 72 disciples. Coincidentally, the Gospel on October 5, 2017, our departure for Fatima was on Luke, the mission of the 72 disciples sent to by two. Okay, so how long did it take you to write down the book and what was the most difficult part? The book was written for a year and it has three parts. The first part is the Roman Catholic Church hierarchy. The second is footsteps, 84 days around the world. This is a the script which was also made into a movie. And the third part is Santa Teresa de Avila joins Ortega twins 
for the 500 years of Christianity journey and the last part is Mary, mother of the church. And what is the message you want to transmit your readers through your book? The message we want to impart is that all of us have the mission to proclaim the gospel. And it was given first to the apostles by Jesus Christ. And it is written in Mark 16, verse 15. Go to the whole world and preach the gospel to all creation. And we twins studied at the Pontifical University, Gregorian University at Rome. And we took up practical theology and communication in 2004. And this was under the directorship of Robert White. He is a priest. And when we came back to the Philippines, we were commissioned as catechists by the late Bishop Artemio Riliera. So we want the readers to read our book so that they will travel with us twins around the world and with Santa Teresa de Avila because we left our books in the different continents of the world. Statues. Thank you, Statues. Maria. Thank you, Maria Nila. We are very happy of having you here today. And we want to wish you very good luck with your book on the market. Thank you for your time. You look wonderful. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ginebra, and goodbye. The same with the interview. I'll send you the link as soon as it is ready. Okay. Okay. Bye. brothers and sisters because we are secular Carmelites and we love following the footsteps of Saint Teresa the first woman doctor of, of the church <laughs> Ma Nila. I am happy that my twin sister Luz told me to write the book it is hard work but it is worth the effort, the time, and the, uh, of course, the finances came from her, so no problem writing the book. But this will be our last book because we have already searched for God and encountered God and writing a book and our faith-filled experiences and we want to follow the advice of the late Abbot Santos Rabang who said that we come to a still point following the footsteps of La Madre, uh, search God in the, in, in the interior castle of St. Teresa's seventh mansion which she characterized as a spiritual marriage. Oh. Can we just do? Uh, can we just add some more? Yes. Okay. Like for example, the question: significant experiences in our lives that find expression in our book. First, the union consecration of the Philippines to God the Father. We were in Rome, Saint Peter's Square, 2004, and. I was holding this one foot statuette of God the Father. The Swiss guard said 
impossible. But when the mobile, mobile, book, mobile, car, passed by, I shouted, Papa, Papa! And I was able to hand the statue to Pope. It was his last birthday and he is now a saint. Second, we discovered St. John the Ortega from Burgos, Spain. He is the patron of architects. St. Teresa founded 17 foundations and on her fifth birth centenary, we went all over Spain. I left my cell phone at the taxi, but St. John the Ortega made sure that the driver brings it back to the hotel where we were billeted. Third, 100th year of the miracle of the sun, our Fatima 100 pilgrimage, we encountered two Carmelite nuns. On October 12, I rested at the stairs going to the colony, and then I saw the name St. Teresa of Avila. Looking up, you could see the statues, life-size statues, mostly of founders of religious organizations, and from first, from left to right, is the statue of St. Teresa. And in, we were inspired to join the sick at the healing mass at the second floor. On October 13, 2017, I received a personal revelation from God. People were moving towards me. Somebody pointing and with a joyous greeting said, I knew that lady is somebody special. I took a portrait of her. Coincidentally, at Greece Airport, a Catholic priest sketched my face and gave it to me before we embarked for Turkey. And this is my portrait over there at the back. I am glad that we have written the book which is our contribution for the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines in 2021. The theme of the 500 years of Christianity is gifted to give. In 1521, Ferdinand Magellan discovered the Philippines and the Spanish missionaries Christianized us. The Santo Niño, the tender love of Santo Niño, according to Papal Nuncio Charles Brown, is the symbol of the arrival of Christianity in the Philippines. And we were privileged to have attended the opening of this 500 years of Christianity at Cebu on April 14. And we witnessed the reenactment of the first baptism. And we believe that St. Teresa has a hand in writing our book because at six years old, she knew about the Philippines. We have received the faith, nurtured it, and now it is our mission to spread the faith to others. Now, what do they say about our books? Well, we have Ellie Lunda, a freelance social development consultant, and she says that our documentary can be read by the general public. It inspires school children to appreciate the importance of traveling. The late uh, Mamurth Banatin of the Adams Express Travel Corporation says it gave so much impact on me. The small miracles and the fascinating stories behind our pilgrimage. I felt I was reading the Bible. Mary Jane Ortega, former city mayor of San Fernando Longinon, says, 
Maria Luz and Maria Nila are peace personified, following the footsteps of Saint Teresa of Avila, going to the various continents of the world and living in Carmelite convents. So we land at the Greece, Europe, then Ghana, Uganda, Tanzania of Africa, and South America, we is left at the convent of Porto Alegre, Brazil, and Sucre, Bolivia. Cygnus Philippine President Bernardo Cadaveral said, in each country they visited, it gives a glimpse, not only of the beauty of nature, but the kindness of hearts of people. It was a miracle how they were able to cover the entire seven continents in 84 days. Yes, for me, it's really the Fatima miracle. Fatima miracle are going around the world. See how God rewards? Okay, last but not the least, I want to say that we are very happy to be secular Carmelites. And the general superior of the Carmelite, Carmelite order uh, which is composed of the friars, the nuns, and the lay is Reverend Father Miguel Marquez Calle. Although we still have to meet him, we could not meet him because it is pandemic. But we really look forward to his coming to the Philippines. Okay, bye-bye. Remember that you have only one soul, that you have only one death to die, that you have only one life which is short and has to be lived by you alone. And there is only one glory that is eternal. If you do this, there will be many things about which you care nothing. Todo se pasa, solo just basta. Saint Teresa of Avila.